when people hear about this airplane, a hybrid electric plane, they're often very excited, but they're also a little bit skeptical when you talked about the range. Because I, th I don't, yeah, and I think it's understandable because most people don't know that until the early 90s, you have showed me this map, there were hundreds of routes addressing a similar fly flying range. Uh, in the in the U.S., for example, uh, and I think there are sim similarities in in the Canada in Canada, and I think also in in New Zealand, for example, and um, so um, and I, I think uh, I mean why why did it, did it stop? I mean the, the increasing oil prices. I mean I wrote a book about oil, so I know a lot about oil, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the oil prices that went up during the whole 90s and the 80s and, and 2000s. So, and with that, of course, fuel, fuel costs. And as you have told me, I mean, I didn't understand it before, but I understand it now that the maintenance cost of an airplane is incredible uh, with, you know, yeah. Mm. But this could change. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I could give my, my, my sort of little version of this, but uh, essentially range, obviously you need to have a useful range and we're only getting to a place with batteries where we have use, useful range now, and that's gonna improve because you don't want to have an aircraft that can't do anything. And that's also why you need a hybrid system. But besides that, range is a little bit of red herring. Like whenever you're developing a product, um, you know, you have several um, dimensions, characteristics of a product. Some of them are competitive and some of them are, you know, so, so if you look at everything, everything that sort of makes up a value proposition of an aircraft, Range is only one of those things, and, it's, and for regional planes, it's it's range has always been quite quite small. Like the the the, the average route length of, of these thirty seater when they're flying in the nineteen nineties in the United States was one hundred and seventy two miles, so about two hundred and seventy kilometers. So it's not really about cost, or sorry, it's not really about range. It's about cost, right? So the reason they stopped flying these aircraft were not because they didn't fly far enough; it was because they were did not make economic sense. Um. So when you're creating this technology of electrification, you cannot compete with the energy density of jet fuel. So why compete in that? Like, why not look at this new technology and say, where, where this shines is that it has zero emissions, right? Which is important and not only for climate, but also for our environment, for people living close to airports. It also has low noise and short runway operations. So this means that you can build an aircraft ex or an an uh, air travel experience, which is much closer, uh, an airport that is not separated from our communities, but an integrated part of our communities. Um, and then you have the, the, a good uh, unit economics, a good value proposition there. So those are the things you're trying to optimize for. You're like, don't try to build a long range aircraft with, 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 with battery electric. Try to make it really shine there. I mean, I, I'm sometimes saying, you know, it's kind of like comparing if you were to build an electric bicycle and you, you, you'd you compare it to a Harley Davidson, you know, and say, you know, can you get the same range of my electric bicycle as I can out of a motorcycle is really not the thing. You know, people buy electric air, uh, electric bicycles for, for completely different reasons is that they're much con more convenient, much closer. They make much less noise. They're much easier to understand all of those things. Uh, if you, if you do electric planes that way, you can build what we think is the sort of everyday air travel.